Hi, welcome to the Northwest Carp and Angler's Diary fishing blog. It's winter, I'm back on the canal low fishing, but today I'm drop shotting for perch. Now there's a nice bench behind me, so we're going to sit down and take a look at my drop shot rig. Okay, so we're going to take a look at the drop shot rig. Now, mine's made of tempile fluorocarbon, this stuff. You've seen it before, Drennan Suplex. I like this stuff, I use it for my barbel rigs and there's no point in going out and buying any more when I can use it for my drop shotting as well. So I've got 10 pound suplex from Drennan and that's what this is. Okay, now my drop shot rig, my suplex is about six foot long and it's tied to a braided main line which is yellow in colour because it's easier to see bites. I'll come to that when we do a bit of drop shotting later on. But the actual rig itself is a hook on the line tied with a Palomar knot. Now the Palomar knot is on my channel already. I did a video on a shock leader knot to attach the braid to the suplex and I did a video on the Palomar knot so that you can tie this as well. Now mine's a little bit different. You normally tie a rig with the Palomar knot. I've got on here, I don't know if you can see that, a VMC spin shot hook and there and there are two eyes the hook is like it's on a swivel so it literally it'll just roll over and over and over like that vmc spin shot hook and the reason i use those is because i can tie the up trace to the eye on one side and the down trace to the lead on the other side now when you move this lead it just clips in it clips on the line and every time you move it you can put a nick in the line and I've had a lot of drop shot rigs break on me doing that because fluorocarbon's quite brittle so by using the spin shot I can change out the bottom half only I haven't got to tie a whole new rig and that's why I use it I've not noticed any difference in bite ratio using the spin shot it's quite good but for that flexibility of allowing me to change out the bottom when I break the line with one of these when I'm shifting the weight and moving it it's actually quite good. VMC spin shot hooks, we've got some here. There you go. That's what they are, VMC spin shot. They're a bit more expensive than the normal drop shot hooks, but they're pretty good. And that's how my drop shot rig varies from everybody else. That's the only difference really, apart from that. It's just a bog standard drop shot rig. And I altered it by shifting the position of the weight compared to the law you know the weight's on the bottom and your law's up in the air and when you're winding in the law will work at that depth and you can pin it close to the bottom you can move it up uh, it all depends on what you want to do with it I like mine about that kind of distance you know remember you that's about 10 inches but on the angle when you're fishing that's literally going to be a couple of inches off the bottom when you're winding in at that angle and the way the rig works is you drag it along the bottom and as you're dragging it the law will lift up up in the air and move until you stop and then if you let the line go slack it'll dip and that's what you're doing just move it along up and dip up and dip all the time and that's basically it you can alter the, de alter the depth you know, if, if you're fishing on a far bank, say, you want to keep fishing that far bank, you can literally cast that out and just keep lifting it and lowering it against, against the lead without moving it. So you can keep a law in your take zone for longer or you can edge it back really slowly and it works really well in cold water. The fish aren't biting very well and you want to keep the bait in the take zone. Doing, doing the drop shot is a pretty good way of doing it. Now, the laws themselves, uh, generally, if you look at the drop shot rig, the hook is at the front. You've just, you just nick the hook in the, in the nose at the head. And when a fish bites the law, you're looking for them basically to swallow it whole because the hook point's there. So they've got to get the whole law down them. So I generally tend to stick to laws that are smaller. That's a one inch 
Uh, I usually use a two most of the time, but last week I was struggling, like and I had to drop my low size, and I've still got the same lower on from last week. Um, yeah, so I generally don't go over two inches because I want them to swallow it whole. Uh, and the bigger the law, the harder it is to get a hook hold on them. So obviously you'll catch bigger fish, but you'll miss a lot more bites. And I'm not one for missing bites, to be honest. I like catching fish, even if they're small. So generally I'll stick to one and two inch laws. That's a one inch nano minnow from Crazy Fish. Obviously it's got the paddle tail. You know from previous videos, I like my paddle tail. And uh, that's generally what I use the most when I'm drop shotting. And I used to drop shot to search the canal, so I'll lob a bait out, uh, I'll let it go up and down, and I'll drag it along, coming back, and I'll search the bottom of the canal in different directions, and then I'll move on and repeat until I find a perch. And if I find a shoulder perch, obviously I'm, I'm quids in, and I'm going to do quite well. So that, yeah, that's it, basically the drop shot rig. Uh, I have got other drop shot lures, and I'll show you them now. I generally like to pick laws that I can put on a jig head as well, so I can swap them over. So if I want a jig fish, I can, and if I want a drop shot, I can. And I've got the same laws. So I've got things like two inch gliders from Crazy Fish. They're pretty good. Uh, what else have we got? The Vibro Worm in two inch, you've seen them before in the law fishing in coloured water. The Vibro Worm, they go great on a on their drop shot as well. The Gunky Wiz. They had a pretty good law them actually. I've done really, really well on these this winter. Uh, let's have a look. It's outside isn't it? Gunky Wiz, two inch. They're a cracker. Um, obviously the Nano Minnows, good pack, good pack of them. Just plain red worm. Now they're three inches long, but I can chop them in half. And they're, they're good for uh, close in and very light work. Uh, minnows, little drop shot minnows. They're pretty good as well. Uh, Polaris, they're uh, pink Polaris. A lot of people have recommended these for drop shotting, and I've got some myself. Um, they're brilliant for fishing close in. If you've got a, if you're on a shoulder perch like these, are, these are fantastic. You know where you, you just need to dab the lure and move it a couple of inches. That little tail will whip up and down, and they're pretty good as well. Um, I've also got a couple of others. HTO. I got them because they look pretty good for perch because they, they kind of mimic. They're the same two-tone appearance as a minnow so I bought them as a kind of match the hatch kind of law they might mimic a minnow um, mini shads they're called uh, leeches I've got one that resembles a leech that's a purpley colour they're okay as well again it's like a worm but it's got a very subtle end and it'll it'll bounce up and down and these uh, these are called ballsy worms, these are pink, one and a half inch. They look like a dildo. You know, if that was six inches long, your missus would be in the shop buying one of them. <laughs> and they're pretty good as well. Again, these will go on a jig head as well. And there's a little ball on the end. And the ball will whip up and down and vibrate. And they're brilliant for catching perch. So, they're the, generally the laws I've got at the moment. Um, I generally stick to the two inch gunky whiz. Uh, I've also got copy two shads, you've seen them before, low fishing in coloured water, they're brilliant on a drop shot rig in one and two inch. So I use them as well. So that's generally all the gear I've got. Okay, so that's a basic drop shot rig. Once you've got your depth set right, you're laughing. Remember the angle, you know, when you cast out, look at the angle of, of down from your rod and try and work out where the law is going to be in the water. If you're a long way out, it's going to be virtually on the bottom and you might need to lengthen that because you want it slightly up so that when you are wind in, tight line, let it fall, it drops, wind in, tight line, pull. 
it goes up and down like that and it can't go any higher than where it is you know so you're always in the take zone down on the bottom if the perch are down on the bottom that is and that rig works really really well so let's go on the canal and we'll have a look at the retrieve and we'll see if we can actually catch something with it Okay, so the retrieve, basically all I'm doing is putting the lure out and then across the canal. I'm going to hold the rod, tighten down to the weight, then I'll draw the rod so that the lure moves up and across. Remember those, those loops I was telling you about before where they go up and then down. When you're drawing the lure and pulling the weight towards you, the law's up and swimming and then when you let it go slack it dips a little bit and it just goes up and down like that so I draw it towards me let it slacken off draw it again let it slacken draw it again let it slacken draw it again slacken and that's all the one all I'm doing <coughs> just draw the weight towards me so that the law flutters up and then back down again Got roughly it's probably about eight to ten inches between the weight and the law so it's going to be at an angle like that's going to be a couple of inches off the bottom okay that's all I'm doing today I might alter the distance from the weight to the law I'm not getting anything that's where that's my starting point Now, when you're drawing your lure in, because your weight's going over the bottom, you don't really know what to bite and what isn't. Sometimes you can hit a bit of a snag. Sometimes it can be a fish pulling on it. Generally, when you get a bite with this setup, either the rod will go over and you'll know there's a fish on it, you feel the thump, thump, thump. Or sometimes the fish can hit the lure and then move off to the side. And that's why we use yellow braid yellow braid on the spool is very easy to see going into the water so when you lift it when you draw it back and the law flutters up and along if a fish hits you from the side and goes sideways the braid will move off to one side and we can see that as it's with the slack in the line if the fish does take it the braid moves off to the side and that's why we use yellow braid okay right so let's see if we can get a fish Just under on the lower house, I'm drawing the rod back and I'm letting the line go slack. And that's all I do, just draw the rod, let it fall slack, draw the rod, let it fall slack the rod let it fall slack and it's, it's working that ball up and over and down and it's just going like that all the time along the bottom. Sooner or later we'll find ourselves a perch. Incidentally one thing I didn't mention before with the rig when you're tying the rig is the hook should always be pointing upwards you don't want a point that's going down always up Okay. If it's pointing down and you get a bite and you're trying to say, you know, you might not land it. So we'll always have the hook pointing upwards. They're pretty easy to set up with these, these spin shot hooks. So that's just one thing I forgot to mention before. Now let's see if we can get on pitch.
Yeah, it's very difficult to tell a bite from a twig on the bottom because you're dragging the weight along the bottom. So my advice to you is hit everything until you get the hang of it and you develop your skills a little bit more. When you get a little pull and you're not sure, um, you can either clobber it or pause and leave it and see what happens. But generally, when the fish bite, you know about it. One drop shot, cut pitch. Oop. A bit. There we go. Now, as you can see, he's completely nailed that. And that's the advantage of dropping to a one inch law to get bites, even the little ones can nail it literally swallowed that one inch crazy fish nano minnow you can see he's, uh, all his gills are flared out there that he's not, clearly not a happy bunny but yeah that's drop shotting you just keep drawing that weight letting the line go slack so the law goes up and down up and down and eventually Pass one of them, like this one, it'll slam into it. Let's see if we can get some more. He's back. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that look at drop shot fishing. As you can see, I like the paddle tail laws. Uh, they work well for me. Uh, you can use just about any lure on a drop shot, you know, worm, leech, anything like that. Um, they all require different techniques, but the paddle tail for me really works because I can chuck that lead across the canal and I can draw it back and as the line goes tight, the lure will flutter up and then let it go slack, it will flutter down and it's flutter up, flutter down, flutter up, flutter down all the way across the canal as you're coming back. Um, and if you can work the lure in that lower section of the canal down near the bottom it's perfect and it, it's great for searching the canal now there's not many fish course in this video uh, that's not down to drop shotting it's a cracking technique it's more down to the fact that the Shropshire Union canal behind me is a ball breaker for catching perch from it's really really difficult um, some winters I catch more pike than I do perch and uh, you know there should be a lot more perch around uh, they can be very difficult to locate, very nomadic, which is why I search for them and why I use the paddle tail laws more than anything. If I found a shoal, I'd be quite happy with a worm, you know, just twitching a worm or, or a leech or something like that. You know, it's, it's uh, entirely up to yourself what you do and the technique to retrieve or how you twitch it is very much down to the law you use. Um, the paddle sails for me they work really well now one thing I've found on the Shropshire Union Canal and a good tip for all canals really um, watch out for scattering shoals of roach uh, these perch are very very difficult to find and I've had my best days it's happened to me four times this winter I've seen roach scattering on, on the surface and I've gone to where they were and drop shot at the area and on those days I've had the most fish I've ever I've caught and the biggest fish as well because you know obviously the fish are active in the hunting and the perch they can literally they can herd the roach up near the surface and then they'll start attacking them and the fish will go whoosh across the top so uh, it's a good indicator that the perch are there and on the days I've seen it uh, the area's literally been rammed with perch and I've done really really well so that's a good tip watch out for scattering roach 
Now I've got an Instagram channel, I've been posting pictures of the low caught fish that have caught this winter on my Instagram through November and December. Uh, follow me on Instagram and you'll see what goes on in between my videos. I don't make videos every week like some video bloggers or twice a week or go lives and stuff like that. Uh, I haven't got the time. I generally only make a video once every six to eight weeks. So, you know, that's what I aim for. If I can do them quicker, I will. But it's very much down to time and I haven't got that much of it to be honest. So uh, in between videos, have a look at my Instagram because I put my pictures on there and you can see what I'm doing and what I'm up to. Uh, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already for my YouTube. Um, I'll be back with another video soon. I haven't done any carp fishing this winter so hopefully the next video I make will be on carp fishing. But I hope you've enjoyed this look at drop shot fishing anyway. It's a, it's a really good method, I like it. You know, I'll switch between drop shot and jig fishing. Um, I'll actually take two rods with me these days. Uh, since I filmed the law fishing for beginners, uh, I've got another rod and reel and I have one set up for jig fishing, one set up for drop shot and I'll alternate between the two depending on which one I feel will give me the best chance of a bite on the day. If it's cold, bitterly cold, I'll stick with the drop shot. Uh, it's been four degrees on this session, three or four degrees. Today I've had rain, I've had snow, I've had sleet. Not exactly ideal conditions to be out in really so it's been tough going and obviously the fish have been difficult to find as well so um, we'll have to make do with that one <laughs> okay so that's it for now uh, take care of yourself tight lines and I'll see you in another video